And by the way, we can walk on eggshells in some areas of life and not in others. We might walk on eggshells at home and in family relationships and at work be completely who we really are or vice versa. I know with myself, I didn't realize that I was walking on eggshells um, even from, from the time I, I, I was crawling on eggshells, <laughs> I would have to say, um, and didn't even realize it because that's all I knew for a long period of time. Just to share a little bit about how walking on eggshells showed up in um, my adult life. In one relationship that I was in, I noticed that 20 minutes before this person was in my house, um, my body would change. I would start kind of being alert, hypervigilant. I would be checking, like, is everything okay? What's going on? What didn't I do today? And just running down this list. Now, here's the crazy thing. I didn't even realize I was doing that. My mind really didn't understand what was going on, but my body knew that I wasn't emotionally safe. And so it was turning on. My survival mechanisms of my body were turning on. And that's the sad part of uh, toxic relationships, of covert narcissistic relationships, is that rather than feeling safe with our partners or with our family members, we feel more like we're walking through a minefield. So anyway, those 20 minutes, I noticed like, oh, something's different about me. I don't, I don't know what, exactly what it is. Again, I was very unconscious to a lot of unhealed trauma from the past. So I was just noticing that. But other than those 20 minutes, I was still me. So it'd be like these 20 minutes, my nervous system would kick on. And then I was me the other times when I was alone. Sadly, the longer you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist, that changes. Those 20 minutes became my new 24-7. And I became stuck in hypervigilance, over tuning to the external and completely leaving me. And then on top of it, I was working so hard to try to make this other person happy. I was uh, unconsciously stuck in a fawn response, trying to make them happy so they wouldn't get mad. And because I was doing that, I was so unaware of how this was affecting me, how this was affecting my life. Now, I can look back and be really upset with myself. Like, how could you let that happen? And I say that because I think we tend to do that. We tend to be really hard on ourselves, very shaming, and we don't want to do that. That is not helpful. Narcissists are harsh enough that we don't want to kick ourselves when we're down. And so when I was putting this together, I was like, how can I present it in a way that helps us to understand why or how we fell into a relationship like that? How did I let myself go from being me to getting sucked into a relationship where I was no longer me? I was 24 seven emotionally regulating somebody else and trying to help them to not be angry. Let me share my screen because I feel like there are three things that are needed. So these are the three things that create that perfect storm. The first is an unpredictable environment. So with narcissistic abuse, everything is um, inconsistent. The rules change. They get angry if you go left, so you go right. They get angry when you go right, you stand still, they get angry. So there's a chaotic environment there are reactions that are so over the top to what's taking place. Now, in any relationship, there's always rupture. Rupture is a normal part of life. There's no perfect relationship where people don't have disagreements, but there should be rupture and repair. But in narcissistic relationships, it's like rupture after rupture after rupture. So there's this unpredictable environment. However, in order to get sucked into the relationship, this is my opinion, this unpredictable environment with some people and with myself, if I hadn't recently had my unhealed trauma from the past woken up, because for many years, I felt like my trauma was in remission, kind of like cancer goes into remission, but can get woken up. Before I met this person, my um, I, I had a shame wound that was opened up as an adult. And so that unpredictable environment latched on to unhealed wounds from the past. Could be that in childhood, again, I didn't realize that I had grown up in a narcissistic family system. I had no idea, I thought the problem was me. I was a scapegoat. So this unpredictable environment latches onto our unhealed wounds, which wake up auto-regulation coping skills. 
In other words, the coping skills that our survival brain went into when we were toddlers, when we were small, the survival um, coping skills that our brain adopted without our conscious consent, right? Because we weren't choosing them. Our survival brain did that, gets woken up. And one of the main coping skills that we develop in childhood is fawning, placating, because we had to. Our go-to trauma responses are fight or flight, but we can't fight adults. We can't run away from home. So the survival brain's like, all right, well, we will fawn. We will stifle who we really are. We will try it really hard to make them happy. We will find the secret formula to make them happy. And then we'll belong, we'll be taken care of, and our life won't be on the line anymore. Now, in childhood, that's an awesome strategy. But when it wakes up in our adult life, it keeps this relationship pattern alive because the narcissist is stuck in a fight trauma response and they're fighting all the time. We're fawning and then we're just swinging in a trauma loop all the time. So what was a great strategy in our childhood is not a good strategy in adult relationships. And if we don't break out of the fawn trauma response, we can leave toxic people, we can leave narcissists and find another one, a more covert one. So taking a second and thinking about that um, perfect storm, so to speak, right? The three things, the unpredictable environment, um, which can show up in relationships with hot and cold behavior. It can wake it up. The unhealed wound is like, oh, this is familiar. This happened in childhood and I had to find the formula. So maybe I'll do that. There's that auto-regulation that takes place. Rupture, um, Adriana, is um, when the relationship has like a disagreement, normal disagreements. They're all a part of life. But with narcissistic relationship, it's like rupture, rupture, disagreement, fight, no repair, no reconciliation, no way of working at it together. What happens as a result of that perfect storm and finding ourselves sucked into a relationship where now we're stuck in the fawning trauma response and we don't even realize it because by the way, guys, it's unconscious. No one chooses the fawn. No one's like, okay, I'm going to fawn to work through this. No, it's part of our survival brain that um, takes over when, when our our survival brain's like, no, this is too much for you. Here are the consequences of walking on eggshells. This is what I experienced. Yes or no in the chat box, if you can resonate. As I spent longer in relationships like this, the number one emotion in my body, the one that I felt all the time was fear. Now, as a result of being in fear, whether it was low-grade constant fear or intense fear, your body is being flooded with adrenaline and cortisol. So this affects you physically. A lot of people that undergo these types of relationships struggle with adrenal fatigue, digestive issues, fibromyalgia, inability to sleep, brain fog, memory problems, difficulty making decisions, rumination, right? It's like check, check, check. Something else that happens is you lose touch with yourself, your gut instinct. We're completely hyper-focused to the external. That's what this type of abuse teaches your body to do. doesn't matter if you know what's going on. It doesn't matter if you know that they're abusive. Your body's like, no, you. the narcissist trains you so that your body's like, no, I need them to agree. The constant criticism, especially when it's covertly done, erodes your self-esteem. You start feeling as if you're not good enough. And there's that... Um, Childhood wound, if it's unhealed, well, the coping strategy is if I'm not good enough, I'll I'll be better. I'll try harder. And we're exhausting ourselves, trying to make this person happy, trying to fix it when the reality is sadly, if we're with a covert narcissist, they don't, there is no secret formula. They like you to be like that. They're like the jockey with the carrot dangling in front of the horse. It's a mirage that that we're chasing. If we think that we're going to find the formula and then everything will be okay. That's a childhood coping strategy. We wind up feeling trapped and powerless and our nervous system is constantly 24-7 and this is the walking on eggshells. 
our nervous system is 24 seven in either fight, flight, freeze, or fawn trauma responses. And by the way, our trauma responses aren't the enemy. Our trauma responses are awesome if there's something traumatic going on. It's our body's way of saying, there's no time to think I'm going to kick on and help you. I'm going to help you rise up to this problem. And then when the traumatic event ends, your body should go back to you. However, narcissists are like the child yanking the chain on the light, you know, those little metal chains and they're yanking, yanking, yanking until they pull it off and it's stuck at the on position. That's kind of what happens with our nervous system. It's been activated so frequently, so chronically that we're never us anymore. We're just trauma, traumatized. That's the difference between trauma and traumatized. Trauma is, yes, my nervous system kicked on. I went into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, and now I'm me again. Traumatized is I went through it. Maybe the narcissist is gone, but my body's still in it. So that we're stuck in survival mode. For these are about 22 years apart. This is when I was in a relationship. To me, I feel like I don't need, I'm not in that body. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. I was criticized. I was criticized if I tried to look in any way clean and nice. I was made to feel selfish. And little by little, I became a shell of a person. Now, at least I can say I'm in that body. <laughs> I'm there. It's not easy. It's not easy to do the inner work to heal, but it is possible. So I want you guys, uh, that, that's kind of what I wanted to stress with this picture. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed a tiny piece from yesterday's live webinar. Always remember that if you feel stuck and you're learning and learning and learning and still not able to shift after emotional trauma, come check us out at Thriver School of Transformation. We meet live just like this every week and we do the inner work together.